So what you see is uh, a wing that is showing some trailing edge separation, which is exactly what our wing was designed to do. However, there's some misinformation on the internet and Facebook primarily uh, about flow separation and flow viz in general and how it basically affects wing performance and that type of stuff. So we're gonna take it over to Mike at Professional Awesome and Paul and have a little discussion about flow viz and how it affects performance and specifically on our UCW wing so that you guys kind of understand a little bit more about what's happening, why it's happening and the performance change throughout the angle of attack on the UCW. Hello, I'm Paul. Yeah, I'm Mike from Professional Awesome. And I'm here to talk about Flowviz. All right, so Flowviz would be like a mix of like say kerosene and some sort of fluorescent powder that you would mix in. It doesn't have to be kerosene, it can be some other oil-based product, but you want it to basically Shows closed. So, so you mix it together and it makes basically an oil, a colored oil, and you can put it on surfaces. And as the air flows on it, basically the wall shear basically shapes it, and you can compare that to CFD. So, wings have two different types of stall. Traditionally, two different types of stall: trailing edge stall, leading edge stall. Leading edge stall is generally a it's generally problematic because when you do have separation or detachment of the flow, it'll have a tendency to detach early, right? So up at the top, up at the, the, the front side of the ring. That's leading edge, right? The leading edge, and it'll have a tendency to detach flow and separation at that area. Now, trailing edge stall, much like this wing is designed to have, is later. So it has a tendency to detach at the trailing edge and then progress forward as it gets worse, right? So that separation slowly moves forward. Now, that still means that as the detachment moves forward or the separation moves forward slightly, you'll still have an area on the wing that still is producing downforce, but not necessarily as much as it would have previously. That's why it depends. And when you have, another good, another good aspect of this is when you have, when he's talking about the separation and it goes down, so you have tri leading edge separation and it separates downward. Think of it as tangent to the surface of where it separates. All right, so I'm back at the shop. I'm gonna try and help with some diagrams, some visualization, so you guys understand what Paul and Mike are saying a little bit easier. Draw a nice little wing. That's, I don't know, you know. Doesn't matter, it's crappy. Um, so we have trailing edge separation, which is basically towards the rear. This is a cross-sectional view of a wing blade, by the way, so the wing's coming this way and that way and uh, obviously every wing has a different shape and style to it and that's what causes different separation and uh, flow detachment and all that stuff. So basically a separation from here to say here, trailing edge, and then when we're at the leading edge, we're right there to there. Some awesome handwriting. Back to Mike and Paul. So the air is going to get to follow the direction that is tangent to the surface as it separates. So if it separates up front, it's going to want to go follow that same tangential line. Whereas if it's back here, it's going to follow this same tangential line. So if it's trailing edge separation, yes, you do lose downforce where it separates, but you're not losing total downforce. You still, it's not like it goes to a neutral pressure or a high pressure zone. It's still low pressure, just not as low as it could be if it wasn't detached. Loss of efficiency, but not loss of total downforce. All right, so Paul's talking about the tangent line, basically of where it separates. So say the wing starts to separate here, you're gonna have this 90 degree right here, and then that's where the flow is gonna start to detach, and then we're kind of losing out on some, obviously, flow attachment here. And when it, say it were to happen up here, you have this area that basically we're losing massive amounts of downforce um, at a leading edge, which is, which is why ultimately the UCW is trailing edge stall, and that's why we developed it to be a trailing edge stall, because it's much safer wing blade um, versus a leading edge stall profile. And there are both different profiles, and obviously uh, people can develop whatever profile they want. Ours was developed off of a known profile and then iteratively processed through CFD uh, called adjoint solver. So basically, uh, it would actually morph the wing blade based off some parameters that we wanted uh, as far as efficiency and downforce creation. 
Uh, but ultimately, our wing does separate on the trailing edge. And in our opinion, it is a better wing blade for automotive use and what we are using the wing blades for. Ultimately, if a wing has leading edge stall, it can be quite dangerous. You lose all rear downforce or a lot of rear downforce very quickly, very rapidly. A trailing edge stall is much safer because as this separation starts to propagate forward, you still have this front of the wing blade making uh, quite a bit of downforce and we're, we're making, uh, we're, we're basically just, it's a, it's a safer wing. If you're looking at FlowViz, you're looking at basically the time mean, which is the average, right. where you don't actually fully know what it's always doing. So with all of these types of tests, you have to take what is going on into account. So it tells a picture, not the picture. The, the biggest thing that I want to kind of elaborate here is that FlowViz around the track is not as scientific as, as most people would tend to believe. And yes, I understand that going around a track and going around the track faster is ultimately what matters, but what we're trying to study and what we're trying to do R&D on and learn and improve our products, going out on the track with FlowViz is not the most beneficial way to do it. If we did it in a wind tunnel, that'd be even more beneficial. And then we actually do CFD and we find that to be quite beneficial because we can throw wall shear stress on it. We can look at the streamlines. We can actually visualize what's happening at a controlled situation. Around a track, you have crosswinds, you have other cars that are interfering with the airflow. You have uh, turns where the car's um, rolling and changing direction. Uh, which is going to really ultimately affect that that bottom mount because it's it's on the bottom of side of the wing and you're going to have separation around that which we have seen quite substantially which i think a lot of people forget a lot of people look at something and be like this is the picture this is what it is doing where it's like no this is something that it is doing at this point in time right and the only way to clarify or quantify specific situations is to only be involved in that particular situation so an example would be if you take the car and drive it at 100 miles per hour steady state for a couple seconds let's say 10 seconds or something with the flow viz you then get the interpretive pattern that you get off the flow viz you bring it back in then you know what it's doing at that point that is true but if you do a lap that doesn't tell you what it's doing throughout the entire lap it tells you what it's doing for the average of the lap so if you do have some separation at that point though not great especially if it's trailing edge, it's better than if you had that leading edge separation or otherwise. You can regain attachment at different speed, at a higher speed potentially, because the air has more energy to it. It doesn't mean it's gonna blow off entirely. It could, it could follow the surface better at a different speed. At higher speeds, you have a better chance of reattachment, but you also have a better chance of detachment. So right. it's kind of like a catch-22, because it, it's all about your boundary layer, and right. you can go into fancy, like, Shear stress drawings right. it on gets the a little more layer, and where the flow starts reversing, and that's right. where separation occurs. And then, right. as it comes and separates, it could definitely reattach further along. Right. And then you'll basically have a pocket bubble right. of deseparation, uh, right. which is actually pretty common on diffusers. Right. It's the, very common to have a separation bubble on a diffuser and have it reattach further down. You'll have a you'll have an area of eddy, either somewhere, you know, further closer to the trailing edge of the wing, and You'll either bubble over that, or you can blow that eddy away with higher, higher energy air. I'll say it that way. You can blow that eddy away with higher energy air and reattach, and the wing could functionally work better at that point. But again, these are all very specific situations, and it, and it depends. Just because it is uh, having a trailing edge separation, it does not mean that it's performing less downforce. It may not be performing as efficiently, which means we're adding more drag for the downforce gained but it's still producing more downforce. So we're gonna draw two wings here. So we have a wing here at let's say, let's say this is three degrees. And we have another wing here. Ah, shite. Let's just, let's just add some more angle. There we go. Now we have a wing at 12 degrees. So we have a separation uh, towards the trailing edge. So let's get some red going. So we have separation at the trailing edge right here. So we're missing out here. And here we have separation here. Now the downforce and the pressure plot on say the rear wing is gonna be different for these two. So we're gonna have, and this is probably still low pressure. It's not high pressure. It's 
probably not even neutral pressure, but it, it, it's just not as low as say right here. So we're gonna have like a low pressure pocket and it's gonna go something like this, as far as like the, the pressure curve. And as dyno guys would call it, we'll call it area under the curve for downforce. So we got all this area. And this guy, while it's losing out on this whole area, as far as really good downforce production, it's obviously gonna be producing a lot more drag. It's gonna be a little bit more, or a little less efficient. So we have say like eight to one here and maybe six and a half to one here. We can actually pull some UCW data if you guys really want, but I'm just putting through some numbers out and we're making maybe let's say 200 pounds of downforce at um, 100 in this one. And we're probably making somewhere around like 450 pounds on this one. So this pressure plot is actually gonna go something like this, where we still have this much more area under the curve and this is much lower pressure than this. This is a larger area, but much lower pressure or uh, much higher, higher relative pressure than say this. So this wing, while it is detaching flow significantly more than this wing, it is still producing more downforce. It's also producing more drag. We can actually show you a nice little graph of that um, as, as we, uh, we did some analysis specifically for this video. And uh, I guess the big thing that I'm trying to iterate here is that just because it is separating on the rear trailing edge, that does not mean the wing is performing less downforce. It is performing less optimally uh, as efficiency goes, but it's producing more downforce and it still has more to give. Uh, our wing is rated to about 15 degrees. I wouldn't run more than that. Um, you start really do having some separation issues, but it's not gonna be unsafe separation like a uh, leading edge. It's still just gonna become basically a parachute. Lots of drag, not as much downforce. That's it from me at Varus Engineering and Mike and Paul. We appreciate them helping us explain some flow viz and rear wings and that type of stuff. I hope this is a little bit more informative for you guys. I hope you guys understand a little bit about our uh, UCW and enjoyed learning a little bit, maybe, hopefully. Until next time. Peace.